Hi, hello. I'm uh, Tom Keten from, uh, from the University of Namur. And I just wanted to ask the uh, panel members about the dangers of corporate social responsibility. Um, we had some good examples, I think, of, of, of good working projects. And I don't want to be skeptical about these projects. They're probably very good. But as Mr. Van Ameringen has pointed out already, many people also point out that there are also some very bad examples. For example, I'm thinking about um, chocolate industry. We all know that some very big chocolate uh, um, companies are selling chocolate that is coming from child slavery. Now, um, I was thinking, isn't there a danger? I mean, I was thinking about two dangers. First of all, um, the fact that maybe some companies might be using corporate social responsibility as a way of image building. Uh, that means that they will only do some development project, finance them, and then um, in the meantime, just do business as usual. Um, and then a second uh, problem maybe might be that um, corporate social responsibility is used as a way of um, making uh, evident to policymakers that companies are already doing something and that therefore it is not necessary to do to um, take more regulation or to uh, and as that way it could be used as a way to avoid uh, policies uh, on this issue and I just wanted to ask uh, what the panel members think about these dangers thank you very much for that good question and uh, the second question please Sorry, less of a question rather than a comment. Um, GIZ, formerly GTZ, Bettina von Lingelsheim. We worked with corporates for many, many years now, and some of the best ideas which we implemented in the scope of PPPs came from corporates. Um, one of the things I think we need to look into is, in the beginning, I think a lot of the PPPs were about more about charity than anything else. We're now much further down the line. We're looking at very complex corporations. And I wanted to um, emphasize something that Mr. Davignon said, which was to say there's no monopoly on solutions. Um, still, a lot of PPPs, I think, are too short-sighted and they end, and we're trying to work on solutions, how to make them more sustainable. And to us, and one of the big examples for us is fort fortification. We have a big SAFO project with BASF. And we're trying as a sort of benchmark to um, achieve mandatory fortification in some countries. And the interesting bit which we learned was to um, see that in many, many issues you have um, bits and pieces that development partners like GRZ, GTZ can do, and others where corporates can do their do it. And I think the crucial aspect is when you design PPPs, one thing that was said is that everyone has a role to play, but it's very tricky to design them in a way that you achieve sustainable impact rather than just charity or, let's say, a short-term imp um, impact. Thank you very much for that remark. Um, allow me to, first of all, ask uh, Viscount Avignon to respond to the first question, and certainly uh, others can uh, fill in. <coughs> Avignon. I apologize for starting first, but I have, having the disadvantage of being a citizen of Brussels, I have to be in another part of Brussels in, in 10 minutes' time. So the first question which is asked uh, is a question I'm totally familiar with. It comes back every time. <laughs> and, and that doesn't mean there's not a good question. But nothing is perfect. And if one starts by not starting because something might not go well, this is something with which I'm impatient. It is clear that good examples don't mean that all examples are good. Mm. And bad examples don't mean that the concept is wrong. I think it is clear. And so what are the conditions? The conditions is the transparency. And the conditions are what many of my other colleagues mentioned before and in the last remark is that there is total clarity on what the project is, what it is entitled to do, what is its sustainability and its duration. This allows to pass a judgment over what it is. The fact, the last part of the question is, business to, wants to try to look good so that one does not impose on it regulations, so that can continue to do things which don't look good and are not good. 
This is the balance, which is co very complicated to establish. And I was struck that by many of the remarks, certainly two of the speakers indicated what is the role of public authorities in incentivizing what should be done. Once public authorities incentivize, they establish what are the norms which has to be followed, what are the, the discipline which has to be followed, and this is much more effective mm -hmm. than theoretical regulation where you end up ticking the box and being theoretically in compliance but without realizing the object. So it's always a complicated issue when evaluation comes into play. So judgment over what is the balance in between, what is the objective, how it is achieved, and what has been achieved. And in that context, transparency is essential, and the multi-partnership is essential because everyone has a role to play, and that is how balance is established. With my apologies, but I have to go and do something much less fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.